Essentialism by Greg McKeon. Finally, a book about just doing what matters and not doing what doesn't, focusing on what's essential, and executing only that. But what's essential to you? I hope you think about it as much as you can, because I'm willing to bet at the end of the day, that's what you'll be the happiest you spend the most time working on, whether it's a project or a life goal or a relationship or some blend of the three. What kind of time management book is this? Is it just like an all or nothing way of looking at things? Is it totally outdated information? What can we learn from it? Let's talk about it. Just so you guys know, there are affiliate links in the description, and if you buy anything through those links, like maybe this book, then I get commission, which helps me build this channel and keep making these videos. You can also find this book and many, many others on my Amazon storefront. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam and I want to make self-growth normal because people shouldn't have to look this information up. It should just be mainstream knowledge. If you agree, then please make sure to smash that like button. Essentialism is not just a way to do more than one thing. It's a different way to do everything. But people peddling certain ideas tend to pull this away from us. A lot of this book is really just geared uh, basically toward the replacement of misconceptions with truths of essentialism. There are multiple chapters, but they're all in different parts, and we're going to go over each one in this review. Part one is essence. Using the studies and personal theories, a balance we can never get enough of on this channel, the author put much of an emphasis here on choice and how it can change our lives. It makes sense. Sometimes one choice can totally change the way you look at or approach things, but realizing you have one in a world where you can, for example, walk into a department or grocery store and have a million things trying to pull your attention span in a million different directions and for you to spend as much time letting it as possible so you can spend as much money there as possible this is a fact. This is an actual thing that department and grocery stores do. And if you do not believe me, check out the chapter about Target in Charles Duhigg's Power of Habit. Fantastic book. And after you're done checking that out, go to any place. Target, Walmart, Macy's, Boscov's. Oh my gosh, there's so many I can't even begin to go through them. The realization that you even have a choice in a world full of places like that is very astounding. And that's just in physical, like, brick and mortar retail. There's also online retail. There's social media, too. There's also the news and television. And then there's your social and personal life, and it seems endless, the outer influences that can persuade us away from to truly pursuing our own values and goals. It is so ridiculous, it's not even funny. Think about that. It's kind of depressing. But that freedom, though, is not. And it is essential. In fact, it is what essentialists thrive on. Along with this, you need to discern what is important and what isn't, and what trade-offs you must simply make as an essentialist in order to reach those goals and fully adopt those values. Part two is explore. Something I love about this book is just how it's organized. <laughs> it's organized in a very essentialist fashion. Um, each of these parts has different chapters, and each chapter hones in on a different topic that pertains to the part. The chapters in this part, they focus on the perks of escaping, being unavailable, looking, seeing what really matters to you, play, embracing the wisdom of your inner child, uh, sleep, protecting the asset of sleep, reminded me a little bit of uh, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, and selection, the power of extreme criteria. I think that by doing all this, the author meant to simplify and essentialize things. The one about sleep really stood out to me but just because of how well he executed it. He said that while there are people who clearly can survive on fewer hours of sleep, he found that most of them are just so used to being tired that they've forgotten what it truly feels like to be fully rested. For me, if I sleep past a certain amount of time, I'm in a better mood but I'm less focused and I don't get as much done. Some people say it's about getting the right amount. Um, some say it's about getting the right quality of sleep. I agree that it's about both and that because of my experience, the older we get and the way our lives change, I think the quality and quantity will also change. What do you guys think though? Is sleep underrated in our society? Is it overrated? Should we get more? How much do you get? Please fill us in in the comments below. Part three is eliminate. He goes over here how to make clear objectives and a lot of these I can name full books about. With these clear objectives, measure what matters by John Doerr. What's interesting is the authors of these books have nothing to do with these examples that he gave. Uh, it's not like, you know, in why we sleep, Matthew Walker explains how sleepy driving is more dangerous than drunk driving. It's not the same content as the other books, but it reminded me of them vaguely, and yet this one acts as like an aggregate source of the pros and cons of following and not following their advice. The author gave a wonderful example of a super polite and professional way to say no to things also in an auto response email that he had. Actually, while he was working on the book, he said, Dear friends, I am currently working on a new book which has put enormous burdens on my time. Unfortunately, I am unable to respond in a manner I would like. For this, I apologize. Anyone who cares enough to reach out to you cares enough to read that and give you the benefit of the doubt. And part four is execute. The first part of this was about preparation and just making sure you prepare as thoroughly as possible for things. A large part of this is creating a buffer, which I always consider to be room for maneuvering in just about anything, but the most popular use of it is definitely in time management. The flow section where he talked about Michael Phelps 
was totally insane. Probably the craziest thing I heard in this whole book, where Phelps would have a routine that he would spend so much time rehearsing in his head that if you asked him while preparing for a competition, he would say he's not really doing anything. But his coach will tell you he's running the program. So that winning is essentially really just a habit from the very beginning to the very end. Every single step of the way, when you become an essentialist, you will find that you aren't like everyone else. When other people say yes, you'll find yourself saying no. When other people are doing, you'll find yourself thinking. When other people are speaking, you'll find yourself listening. When other people are in the spotlight vying for attention, you'll find yourself waiting on the sidelines until it is time to shine. An example that I have of this literally from today, this morning, this part's actually off script. Fiance and I, we are getting married December 9th and we have a honeymoon. There are 25,000 restaurants in New York City. This is one of the very, very hardest to get into. Justin Bieber got declined at this restaurant because he did not have a reservation. I mean, this, this is totally crazy. And honestly, I was kind of worried because the way this place works, the reservations go out 30 days and they go live at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. What I figured out pretty quickly within maybe a five day time span is that you have about 20 seconds to get that reservation book or your toast. Now, getting the app that I would need to do that and also having my card info plugged in was really helpful. There are people who spend two years trying to get into this restaurant and they give up. And there are people who fly across the country and spend $1,900 just to try their spicy rigatoni. Adele, Jennifer Lopez, Travis Scott, any Kardashian, Kim, Courtney, Kendall, Kylie, you name it, Rihanna. Drake actually had a line in a song about how hard it is to get a reservation. But the lengths people go to just to get a reservation at this place is just totally insane. It is completely it, it, it's just insane, okay? This morning was the one morning, the one time it couldn't have been any day other than today that I could make this reservation. And I had about a 20 second window to fill before every single spot was taken. And once a reservation is taken, you know, if it falls through, it'll stay falling through for about 20 seconds and then it's reserved again. So what I did was I opened the app, I hit search, I went to the restaurant, I hit today, I plugged in the date, I went to the exact date that I wanted it and I tapped on that day. And I did that process repeatedly for two hours straight. The entire time, all I could think about was being in the atmosphere of the restaurant, all the people around me, the love of my life in front of me, some of the best Italian food in New York, and the entire experience of being there. And how difficult it is for so many people to get into it, but I just had that one small chance of doing it. And I can do it. And that's the only thing I was thinking about that whole time. So when 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time came, believe me when I tell you I got the perfect reservation at the perfect time like it was nothing. And this is a place that will decline Justin Bieber just because he didn't have a reservation. That is just totally insane. That's just an example of having this whole program that you can just run for yourself. But it's all essentialism. All of it. Just measuring what matters, exploring what it is, eliminating what doesn't, and executing to the fullest of your ability. Quotes. The pursuit of success can be a catalyst for failure. It's not just information overload, it's opinion overload. Our highest priority is to protect our ability to prioritize. Direction one. I recommend this book for anyone who wants to explore a new or improved approach or philosophy to life, but one a little bit more minimalistic and success-based. I think that essentialism is ultimately the intersection between minimalism and success. And those both go together so beautifully. And if that's something that sounds interesting to you, then I would recommend giving it a go. Direction two. If you like this book, I recommend checking out 4,000 Weeks by Oliver Berkman and The Four Disciplines of Execution by Sean Coffey. Essentialism by Greg McKeown. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification whenever I drop new videos, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.